Ikea is known as the number one business hub in North America, and we are hosting the regional conference virtually. We have invited expert keynote speakers to make this event worthwhile to help up and upcoming entrepreneurs. First on the list is Mr. Arun Bikshishwaran. Arun, CEO of Radices, brings a wide range of industry experience and a proven track record of leadership. Arun has also played the role of chief marketing officer for Media Kind, where Arun was responsible for creating and establishing the brand and marketing communications function for a joint venture media technology company of Ericsson and One Equity Partners. If I have to count the various VP positions Arun has held for the Ericsson Group, trust me, I have to use my fingers and toes. What a versatility and a vast experience. Who would be a better candidate than Mr. Arun Bikshishwaran to open up this forum for an audience who is looking for nothing but inspiration? When I asked Varun what he's going to talk about, he said, seed for the future. Now I'm in Chikyur. Let's hear it from Arun. Arun, stage is yours. Thanks Thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Pony, and uh, the executive team. Um, when I accepted to um, be part of this event, I really had very little idea uh, about the scale and scope of this organization. Um, uh, and uh, in conversation with Venki Saragopan, I understood a little bit more. But what I'm experiencing here now is pretty incredible. Uh, and uh, everything that uh, the executive team has explained as to what is planned for the future is also pretty amazing. So uh, I'm uh, actually very humbled to be part of this uh, activity at this point in time and uh, really look forward to how we could collaborate uh, you know, in the coming months and years ahead. Uh, so with that, uh, Puni, if you would please um, bring up the, um, uh, the pictures. One of the things that um, uh, struck me, if you go to the first slide, please, yeah? and then maybe run the slideshow. Um, when I, when I uh, agreed to do this, um, I had uh, uh, thought about a speech that I had done about a month and a half ago uh, to a, um, a set of engineering college students in, um, in and around Chennai. And um, a friend of mine had wanted me to talk to them to kind of uh, give them some inspiration. And uh, so I, I said, look, uh, I already have some material that I think I could repurpose. But as the weeks went by and I started to understand the scope of what, what we were after here, uh, somehow uh, that material was not really that relevant. And uh, I had to find some new inspiration. And the picture that you see here is a representation of the inspiration that I got, which is a picture of a roof garden. And this inspiration actually comes from my parents, uh, both of uh, whom are um, you know, living in Chennai. And I found a new passion in rooftop gardening. And they take complete pride in taking it from a seed, nurturing it every single day and benefiting from the output because what they eat is what grows on their garden. Now, I couldn't find a better example of what is entrepreneurship about and what are the different responsibilities that we as people carry in this process. So with that introduction uh, and my uh, the, the source of my inspiration, I want to kind of move on, talk for a couple of minutes about the journey that I've been through in the last five decades uh, and, and some of the pivotal moments uh, that have taught me a few lessons and then we'll kind of navigate through the journey in that sense. So if you go to the next slide, um, you know, I was privileged enough, Pony, if you would go to the next slide, please. Yeah, I, I was privileged enough to be born 
um, into a family of entrepreneurs, a family of you know industrial people. Um, my my grandfather, my uncles, uh, my dad, uh, everybody um, uh, was was running. were running companies. They founded companies. They were running companies, and this is what I was born into. So it was a very privileged background in that sense. Uh, so there was no dearth of soil or water, as you see in the picture. When uh, I was uh, I came into the world. And the energy that provided was just tremendously inspiring. And what happens is you kind of take some things for granted. You think that's how the world is uh, because, you know, whatever you want, you can experience. And, and as I navigated through the first 10 years, there was really nothing in my life that I, that I felt lacking. Whatever I wanted was available. Uh, not that we were... Uh, super affluent, but we were able to afford everything that, I, that we needed, right? So all the comforts were there. Now, like any entrepreneur, and uh, you know, I'm sure several of you are experienced, it is not like every day is a sunny day. So as I hit through uh, you know, the second decade of my life, I started to see some realities coming in. And maybe it was just me being old enough to realize that those were the realities and maybe others in the family already knew that. But this, the decline that I experienced was precipitous and it was rapid from, from having a lot of warm you know, uh, comforts. We went into a situation where day to day was a struggle. Uh, and this was at the time when I was finishing high school and about to enter college. So the, the timing could not have been worse. But in hindsight, that was probably the best teaching moment of life. Because from enjoying everything that we had, we went to a situation where we had literally nothing. And the only thing that we had was the hope that was provided by the family and the parents. And, and as we went through that, the, the struggle of an entrepreneur was completely visible in front of my eyes. What are the trade-offs that one has to make? And I saw all family members making these trade-offs from selling your possessions um, uh, because you have certain commitments to make and the commitments are more important than your possessions, etc. So that cycle gave me a taste for what is important in life. And we'll, we'll cover these in a couple of minutes uh, as well. And as we sailed through the 80s, coming back into, uh, into the 90s, that recovery was slow, but it was structured, and it taught me in many, many ways what it takes to navigate through a, a difficult situation. When I landed in the US, I had enough money to pay for living expenses for about a month. And uh, my parents had pretty much um, uh, given me all the money that they had, um, and, and there was no going back in that sense. And uh, th that whole experience of going and telling people who are struggling in every possible sense of the word to say that, look, I don't want to be here. I want to go somewhere else. Uh, and to get acceptance for that in a completely unconditional manner. Again, when I look back at it now, uh, it's pretty incredible. Coming into the US here, uh, the opportunity to actually find myself was completely out there. And this was a struggle because I'd never been out of the house. I didn't know how to cook anything. Uh, and uh, when I came in, uh, all the accommodation in the university was taken. So two uh, uh, friends were gracious enough to allow me into their apartment to sleep in the living room. And uh, so going from that, that decline into a rock bottom, into coming here, into what seemed like an opportunity was basically pushing the reset button and starting all over again. And there are so many people in the process over the next 10 years who have played a role in pouring that water at the right time so that I could actually grow. And every day was a learning experience there. Uh, one, of my, one of my most uh, valuable experiences is with the uh, head of the library cataloging department uh, at the university where I landed up. And I went to her in the middle of, uh, at the beginning of the summer semester. And I said, Margie, uh, I have a big challenge. I need to save up money for my next semester. And uh, I'd been working there in the library for you know 20 hours a week. Uh, and I said, I really need to find uh, a meaningful way to earn uh, you know another 20 hours of wage. And this was minimum wage, you know, $4.25 uh, at that time, uh, which paid for about three minutes of phone calls to India. 
So it's pretty, pretty trying times. And Margie Fuller traded off uh, the opportunity to have two people uh, working for her to just consolidating everything into one person, and that was me. And through the summer, I saved up enough money that really put me on a, uh, on a platform uh, to offer the next semester fees. And from there on, there was no looking back. At every opportunity, uh, there was somebody around the corner. I just had to find the right person who could give me that extra bit of soil or pour some water so that I could continue on my growth journey. Now, over the next um, uh, few years, as I finished grad school with the help of um, wonderful professors uh, who, who helped me find great topics to work on, et cetera, uh, to finding my first job in Ericsson, um, the journey was pretty incredible. And um, the, the key influencers uh, in my early years at Ericsson, I remember I was doing a presentation for a customer and uh, the vice president of our uh, department took me to the back of the conference room and he just said one thing. He said, Arun, you're going to go a long way in this company. And I literally had no idea what he was talking about, right? I mean, I was doing a presentation for a customer, but those words were tremendously inspiring uh, in terms of putting a goal in front of you as to what is possible and allowing you to dream. And I have to tell, I have to say one more thing here, which is probably the most often repeated phrase from me uh, with my team. When I was uh, pacing up and down, in the conference hall of the electrical engineering department right before my master's thesis, about 10 minutes before my thesis defense, my professor comes back uh, uh, going into the conference room and he looks at me and he says, are you doing okay? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm just you know, getting my thoughts together. And he told me something. He said, listen, one thing that you have to remember, when you go in front of that committee, nobody knows this topic better than you. Keep that in mind. And to this day, when I go in front of customers, when I take team members in front of customers, if I find somebody a little bit tense, this is my most often used phrase. The level of energy that it inspires, it is just tremendous. So uh, as we went through uh, the learning experience, uh, of of uh, going through you know the early years in Ericsson, getting some inspiration, etc. Uh, I also found my wife Anu, and together uh, I learned the meaning of partnership. Uh, anu had grown up uh, here in the United States uh, for the majority of her life, and uh, she wanted to go to medical school. And uh, I had grown up in India, and I had seen all my family members go through and create companies and stuff. And I said. You know, at some point in time, I want to go back to India and spend some time either, you know, working there or, you know, doing something. And, and we formed this partnership between us where we took the opportunity actually to go back to India like a year after we got married. And I spent a couple of years there uh, starting a new uh, division for Ericsson. And then at the first available opportunity after doing that, we came back and Anu went to medical school. That whole partnership model um, uh, was a it was a great lesson for life that that today I continue to uh, share with several of our people as to what it really takes if you want to create a successful venture. You need well wishers, you need good partners uh, who are in the same wavelength with you as to what you want to accomplish. You might take different roads, but to get there uh, as a common purpose becomes very very important. Now, uh, also what happens is. Uh, in this process, you start to develop uh, from a seed to a plant uh, uh, and, and eventually a fruit bearing tree. There are so many things that you have to learn to actually uh, survive. Uh, every seed gets out to the world, probably has the same starting chance. But guess what? Uh, where you're positioned, what type of nurturing you get fully determines how you actually grow. So that combination and partnership uh, becomes extremely important. Now, uh, over the next 20 years, I've had the opportunity to really work uh, across the world, uh, live in Europe, uh, live in India again for a few years with the family um, and, and uh, gotten inspiration from so many different people. Uh, at a stage where now I derive inspiration mostly from my children and from my team members. 
um, the, the learning opportunities are just immense. And that in, in many ways is, is talking about the life cycle of a seed. Uh, it's one thing that uh, you grow from a seed to a, a, a sapling, to a, a tree and, and a bear fruits. But at the end of the day, you have to contribute back uh, into the cycle and, 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 and start to uh, flourish in terms of a, a, a garden, hopefully. So that, that in a sense has been a, a five decade journey uh, tremendous learning, etc. But uh, what I would like to do is to maybe cover a couple of the pivotal learning moments. So if you would go to the next slide for me and kind of bring that up, uh, maybe use that as an anchor uh, to talk about things. So uh, as much as we talk about the seed, the role of the gardener is probably even more important. And uh, this, this essentially becomes the partnership, right? Because if you don't have the gardener, uh, knowledgeable gardener who is able to do the things that are needed to keep things healthy, to keep things green, to prune when needed and to water when needed. Nothing of the story really comes out. So uh, a, a few people who have played an instrumental role, but more importantly, the lessons that come out of that. Uh, every seed deserves a chance. And th this is what I've learned from my parents as well. Selfless service, you've got to give every seed a chance to succeed. And uh, all seeds are in that sense made out of the same genes. You've got to give them the opportunity. One thing that I learned from my grandfather uh, who ran, who started from nothing, created a very large enterprise, uh, but never kept anything for himself was a social purpose. Uh, and and uh, I was the first, I was his first grandson and we used to take a lot of drives together. And I still don't remember why he told me this, but he and I were in a uh, uh, drive coming back from one of the factories uh, where uh, at that point in time in you know the early 80s there were some 500 employees and uh, so I was sitting next to him in the car and he said you know Arun for me this is not a company where we make money and I said okay so this is the beginning of a, a because I've never had any of these conversations and he said this is about us being uh, a, a playing a contributory role in 500 families. And those 500 families will grow up and they will all write their own stories. That message still sticks in my head anytime I work with teams because it is not about you. It is not about what you make out of it. It is about what you empower other people to do and then uh, allowing them to blossom. It's just incredible. Uh, I have a picture of my grandfather here uh, every morning when I come into the office. Uh, uh, you know, I continue to derive inspiration uh, from the social purpose that he put out for business. Now, uh, going through Margie and uh, all my professors uh, at school, uh, there is absolutely no compromise on the work that you have to do and you have to do it well but you also have to be learned to be part of the ecosystem. At the end of the day, if you're a plant, you need the sunlight, you need the water, you need your photosynthesis processes, process to run uh, for you to grow. And it's the same way. You've got to do your duty and you know, uh, uh, derive from the benefit um, uh, that, that can come along with it, but don't focus on the benefit, you know, do the work that you have to do. Uh, the family, I uh, talked about our partnership, my, my partnership with Danu, and then, of course, the rest of the family as well. Uh, this is a symbiotic relationship between a plant and a gardener. And the more we realize that and the more we look to mentors uh, to help us along the journey, as tough as they may be. Uh, I remember uh, working with my professor and I had written eight chapters of my master's thesis. Um, and I take the thesis up to him on a Saturday morning, which is when we used to meet. And uh, he says, you know what? We need to rearrange the chapters. And I'm like, uh, are you kidding me? <laughs> this is good. This has got a flow now that I've, I've spent like many, many hours working on. And he's like, no. And you got to trust that the mentor has got something valuable. Of course, you trust your own gut as well. But the, the, the flow that he suggested at the end of the day worked out so much better uh, in terms of presenting the concept. So there is, there is something to be uh, said there about getting that mentorship of time. And um, as far as my professional life is concerned, the big learning there, of course, is that there is no guaranteed rain or sun every day. There will be challenges, there will be tough people, 
uh, and uh, you have to buck up and you have to you know learn to deal with it so these were some uh, very important lessons uh, finding the right mentor and the right gardener of course becomes the most important thing so if we continue with this uh, if you go to the next slide there uh, for me um, uh, what really happens then as an entrepreneur as a person not necessarily as an entrepreneur as any person you got to fill your dreams with a lot of hope this is what comes from within this is the seed that you made of you've got to dream big and you got to fill it with hope not that there won't be any challenges but after you dream big you come back to the present and i love the video that ponisha shared about bringing us all into the present and and taking a moment to you know breathe and focus you got to find your passion and you got to excel at it this cannot be any compromises there will be thresholds there will be some glass ceilings that you have to hit through but if you focus on excellence and excellence has so many connotations to it but at the very simple thing this is what i tell my teams as well you do what you say you're going to do and you say that and nothing more so that there is 100% trust created in what you say and what you deliver that is super important um believe in yourself you know it best back to what my professor said about you are most knowledgeable in the topic than anyone else as far as this topic is concerned you've got to believe believe in yourself but the relationships so knowing that you are a seed and you know certain things but knowing that there is a gardener who is going to play an equally important role in nurturing you and allowing you to grow is extremely important the last couple of things uh coming more from my uh, grandfather's learnings you have to make a difference in the world and as you grow up and 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 you become a experienced gardener in one sense you've got to give back and that ties in with the gratitude be grateful for what you have but have to give back in many ways and if you make that as a purpose you will get fired up every morning there will be no doubt because you're not do doing this for a day to day you're doing this for a much larger purpose and that larger purpose is that you are there to develop a garden you are there to make things beautiful and you want to leave a lasting impact and that can be a very very powerful message to take home every day let's go to the last uh, next slide there uh, this is my favorite quote from all times i had a wonderful journey to africa but if you look at this one every morning in africa a gazelle wakes up and it knows the reality of the present which is that it has to outrun the fastest lion or it's going to get killed on the same count the lion wakes up and it says i have to run faster than the slowest gazelle otherwise i'm going to starve so you got two characters you got the gazelle and you got the lion and guess what whoever you are when you wake up every morning you better be running because either you're going to get killed or you're going to starve this is my favorite quote uh, i think it provides tremendous inspiration for what we do on a daily basis as a seed and as a gardener we've got to complete the cycle and that should be our mission so uh, with that i want to uh, say thank you uh, for uh, engaging and uh, providing me this opportunity a uh, wonderful uh, event here and i look forward to continued collaboration uh, with the association nandri vanakkam pony back to you Thank you, Arun. What an inspiring story, really. And everything you said, even I was uh, watching the comments from the audience. Everyone agree with me that what an inspiring story. Thank you. You know, I read somewhere that parents' life is a book kids read every day. You said that. You said that beautifully. Thank you so much, and I thank ATF for giving me the opportunity to connect with you. Thank you, Arun. Thank you very much.